Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 154. This episode is with actor, writer, and director Justin Tate. He is genuinely one of the most passionate people I've got to hang out with, and it was a blast getting to know him. We talk about how martial arts has helped his acting, learning Stella Adler's technique, the process behind his fantastic TikTok videos, the insane amount of research he does for his different projects, the short films he's made, the dark side of movie making that sometimes comes along with that, how he shot the awful kind in one take, and so much more. Get ready to get fired up, my friends. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 154 with Justin Tate. Theme song time. your posters man yeah thank you i uh i like star wars a little bit it's kinda, i can see that it's kind of my jam you know everybody's got to have something a good friend of mine it's so funny you can tell we're movie people because i've got uh big lebowski pillows oh perfect right? perfect boom. boom i love it that one really pulls the room together that's exactly. pretty good that's why i won't get rid of them my ex yeah. hated them <laughs> now she's my ex-girlfriend <laughs> yeah that's usually how it works yeah <laughs> Uh, but a buddy of mine had uh, that picture of Han Solo you got there. That was yeah. His, uh, the was man. Screen, what was it? His background on his phone for a while. Nice. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I got a few, I got a few little things. Got a few. Oh, little wow. Things. Look at oh, There's more. Well, yeah. Like the you know, you know. Yeah. I, I do martial arts as well. So oh, when cool. you're like, when you're like Kata, I was like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. What kind of martial arts do you do? Uh, I did Shorn Ru for like three years. And then I've just started um, Iaido like seven months ago. I've been like okay. really into that, that lately. Uh, Japanese. Yeah, Iaido's uh like katana. It's Japanese swordsmanship. So it's all about like the art of drawing the blade. And wow, it's that's... pretty cool. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty... yeah. What it's was pretty... the other one? Shorin Ru, it's a uh, Okinawan karate. Oh, also Japanese. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big that's... fan. Pretty big fan. It's a lot of, and you lot both of influence. Of them? You practice both of them? Yeah. The sensei moved for the, the Shorin Ru one, so I haven't been in that one for a while. Okay. But the the Iaido one, yeah, every week every week good man it's pretty cool is amazing Um, i agree i find it helps with acting as well there's that like body side of it as well as like the repetition i don't know a lot of really good actors that i know are also martial artists and vice versa it's cool how it correlates you know my my uh, my martial arts teacher used to say kung fu is everything yeah i like that oh that's kind of intense but i realized like years later that that's what you're talking about right there it's a discipline it's everything that you have to put together to learn how to do a kata to learn how to do a move the practice you know the discipline the 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 consistency Mm -hmm. uh, which is a Mm -hmm. huge huge thing that a lot of people don't innately have absolutely being consistent yeah, um, that, that's actually the thing that drew me to you the most, because I've been following you for a little while on TikTok. Okay. The, I think the first the first thing that got me to follow you was months and months ago, the Mike Tyson transition <laughs> <laughs> that oh, I shit. saw that on my for you. And I was like, you, you fo- followed, followed. That that's me, amazing. Man. That's what yeah, did it. That, my dad con- he, he was my. That's so funny, dude. Yeah, that's what brought me in. <laughs> That literally was not um, how I came up with that was not how it turned out. Like, did yeah. you see the one with the cat or without the cat? I uh, One without. <laughs> okay. So the, that was the original one that I posted was without the cat. And then yeah. somebody was like, oh, you should put a cat in there because he's got a tiger. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. found a white cat and I, and then I put the white cat in and then the video <laughs> blew up. I reposted it and the video just blew up. Um, and the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, this is what's so aggravating about videos like that is yeah. that it's so simple looking and mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Those For people teeth, that don't know. <laughs> yes, those teeth took me the better part of probably four hours to figure out how to get that to work. Really? So, What'd you yeah. do? You keyframe them? Yes. 
So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> originally, I had the teeth makeup. Okay. And I had it on my teeth. Mm -hmm. And when I was watching the playback, uh, first of all, I hadn't even planned on doing that. It was just going to oh. be the, the the trend is just to do the mic or the the transition. Yeah, the transition. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Totally. So that, that was it. And then I, as I'm shooting, that's what I love about making content is like, if you just commit to one idea, mm -hmm. the amount of weird creative thoughts that just come from wherever that just kind of affect it. I love yep. it. Yeah. So that one was like, yo, what if now that I got the stuff on my, cause I didn't do it in the, in the wide shot, I still had to right. make it on. Okay. Um, but it was when I when I was up close, I'm like, it looks like I have a marker on my teeth. Like it doesn't sure. look right. And so I found a picture of this guy on like some dental website Perfect. and was able to literally get like a 4K shot of his fucking gap in his teeth. No <laughs> way. Really? Yeah. So That's I what you did? Cut the gap out. <laughs> and I keyframe tracked my mouth <laughs> and I didn't really know how to keyframe track very well. I think that was like October, November. Yeah. And I had only started after effects in September. So I was like really sort of a bit of a noob to it. And I had to manually track. This is what took like four hours. Yeah. There were certain parts, like I didn't have a mark or anything on my face. I just found like a space. Yeah. And the problem with your face is like, if I move my mouth, like then it's just mm -hmm. going to track that, even though my head's not moving. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I had to manually track a lot of it. And luckily <laughs> oh, I got, I, I got it to a point where I was happy with it. And then I said, that's it. That's so funny. <laughs> I, that that's one of the greatest things, uh, from people who've been on the other side of the camera as well. And I've been on set and stuff. You wow. realize that all these tiny little videos you see, I'm like, this was, this is so much work and nobody yeah. recognizes it because it's a quick little joke, but Oh yeah. I didn't I had, even know it was that much. I had people <laughs> calling me out in December. A bunch of people were like hitting me up uh, saying, you know, how do your videos perform so well when you use the reface app? Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck is the reface? <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of this thing. Sure. And I looked it up and was like, my God, that just makes what I do so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that there's a, there's a reason why what I do is different than the reface app, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm putting my whole self in, in the movie and, and um, you know, that's just using like AI to take your face and switch it around. It doesn't like look the same. It's, I, I agree. Know. I agree. Um, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I think, did, did I read correctly? You're Canadian. I am. That's cool. Yeah, I moved out here uh, in 2008. Really? What part yeah, of Canada exactly. are you from? What's that? What part of Canada are you from? Uh, Calgary. Oh, cool. Calgary, right Alberta. Actually, I got a Flames hat somewhere around here. Nice. Whatever. Um, yeah, I was actually, I was sponsored out here uh, to go to an acting school. Um, and I was going to that acting school. Like I had auditioned for a bunch of schools and I got into that one and I was really excited about that one. Mm -hmm. because that was in some cases, I guess, like part of the dream that I had. Sure. And I got into the school and uh, I was training there for about six, six months or so. Um, sure. And, and I was becoming more and more frustrated that like the people that were teaching me at that school had all claimed to have trained with slash were taught by, you know, this great acting teacher, uh, Stella Adler. Yeah. And um, it, it was really. I'm familiar. I had done... Yes, sir. Boom. Oh, that's the one you got. I got this because of you. Yeah, oh, that was that was me. <laughs> oh, so you've already, yeah, you saw this, this, this thing. That's I remember oh, yeah. that comment. Listen, I know your stuff, Justin. Come on. I love it, dude. <laughs> that's nuts. I, the, yeah. I, I'll preface this. I've, I've been following you for a while. Okay. And anyone that I asked to come on my show, yeah. I research a ton because I got to find something that I feel like we would connect on. Oh, I've, okay. se I've seen Schism. I've seen The Awful Kind. 
I've really? watched so much you know. of your stuff. Dude, I got the internet. I know, but I don't even, I didn't even think I had it on the internet. You don't. <laughs> How'd you watch it? That's amazing. I'll tell you. You want to know how? I want to know how. So I also uh, made a Western that came out this year and oh. I submitted it on Film oh. Freeway. Ah. Which is also where some of your stuff has been. And right. on Film Freeway, I was able to find the password to the protected Vimeo of Schism. Which was Schism. schism. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I do my research, man. Listen, Listen. that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I'm telling you right now, that's going to be the thing that sets you apart from anybody else that's trying to do this shit. And I only say that because when I when I get a role in something, yeah, that's the kind of work that I do for that. Yeah. So I, that's yeah. that's I'm super impressed. What did you I'm think in. of it? I, I, lo put it I on loved it. I'm like you know, whatever. I genu genuinely loved it. So like, really? here's the thing that drew me to you originally, right? Uh -huh. So I'm an actor as well. Well, I'm trying my best to be one. <laughs> I've only hey, been at it for fuck's uh, sakes. exactly. I, I've only been at it for it's been like almost seven years now. Okay. But I've been lucky enough to be in a few movies, short films and stuff like that. But you impress the hell out of me because like I see the content you're making. I absolutely love it. And from an acting standpoint, I'm watching you lip sync the dialogue, right? It's not you talking. No. Well, you I have, am when I shoot it. Yeah, of course. But I'm not have, like being quiet. I am right. You, know, you have yeah. such conviction in your performance uh -huh. that every time you upload something, I'm like, what is going on? Like, it's so good. And I, I'm not just saying this. So much so that when you made that video about wow. that book, I immediately bought it. Because I was like, wow. if that's his thing, this is so good. Whatever you're doing, I'm going to try and do that. Yeah, well, well, yeah, my teacher helped put that book together. That was the, that was the whole thing. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now, the book is yeah. not assembled chronologically because Stella didn't yeah. want... She was insecure about... Uh, her technique sort of getting thrown into a Bible and just tossed out there. She didn't want just sure. anybody to do it. Um, so they kind of. I can see that. Out. I'm like yeah. halfway through it. I got yeah, it and yeah. immediately devoured it. And I was like, what is this? Oh, it's, it, it, it's, that's, it's crazy. That's, yep. Like yeah, it, I agree. it's one of those things that I've learned. Cause I also just finished this other book called uh, the practical handbook for the actor, okay. which is, uh, it's really good. And it's okay. another one of those things that breaks down a technique. And like sure. adds little things of how to do that. And so I was yeah. reading that a lot of it stuck and I was like, okay, that's good. And I've implemented it since and it worked. Wow. And then I'm halfway through this one. And it was like, she would say a similar thing, but in a different way. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Like yeah. have an action going into the scene that then gets erupted by the scene. And that's how you get an right. actual reaction as opposed to yeah. trying to create one. I'm like the math. Yeah. You know, what's an interesting thing about acting is, um, and I think a lot of people fall into it, is there's so much pressure when it comes to having having to sort of be like an emotional exhibitionist. Mm -hmm. You're not really thinking about the other person in the scene that you're trying to affect. Mm -hmm. You're actually just thinking about whether or not you can get to that place or not. Yep. Which means that you start to push and pull and do all these weird things with your face and all this mm -hmm. shit. And I, I was told a long time ago, that what I was doing when I first started, it felt like I was firing arrows in like at somebody that would come back around and hit me. And that's, yeah. <laughs> I was performing for me. Sure, sure. When really you're, you're always trying to get something from someone. You're always, yeah. that person wouldn't be there stopping you from doing the thing that you're supposed to do for no reason. Mm -hmm. everything and that's the thing that arthur would say is this this is not real life it's yeah. realistic right things are different we're not watching a movie to watch you take a piss and take off your shoes and think about what you're gonna do today nobody gives a fuck about that you know what yeah. i mean it's like it's about what's important because we're mm -hmm. not in the business of wasting people's time however I feel like this is such a dig on movies. We <laughs> almost are. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It's, it's insane. It's insane. And like little things, like a big thing I took from her was like, remember, circumstance is the most important thing. 
Yeah. And then See, there's you know, action and dialogue. And I was like, oh. Here's the thing. If you ever get lost, CPR will always save your life. CPR. Circumstance. Uh huh. What's happening in the scene? What's the relationship or whatever? Circumstance in the scene. We'll just say that. Yep. What's circumstantial? The what world. Are the events mm-hmm. that have led up to now to blah, 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 blah. Yep. Relationship. Uh huh. No, CPR. CP. Mm-hmm. P is profession. Uh, so what oh. do you do? If I'm a lawyer, my cadence will be very different than if I was a crook or a sure. chef or whatever. Like it's they're very different uh. Uh, relationship, right? Mm-hmm. If none of that stuff is in there and you're doing like the marriage story, right? Right. It's like, what what's happening just with these two people at at their core? What mm-hmm. the fuck is going on? Yeah. That's all that matters. Nobody yeah. cares that you're a theater director. Nobody cares that you're a whatever it was that he that he did. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it was that he did. I now. think he was the director. He was the theater director. She uh-huh. was complaining about that. That's yep. right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and that's what it, it just, it always breaks down to those three things. And those three things, like if you're on set or whatever, and you're like, fuck, I don't know what to do. Honestly, the best thing to do, Benicio Del Toro said this, and Christopher Walken told him this. Oh, perfect. On Excess Baggage, the movie that he did. <laughs> Walken. He said he was in a scene and he didn't know what to do. And he looked at Chris and he said, I, I honestly don't know what to do in this scene. And he said, well, there's just, just do nothing. And so he did. And that's all that he needed to do. Yeah. So it's like, if you're ever in a scene... And you let, like, you have no idea what to do. You don't know if you should, you know, pour the coffee or whatever. You know, every action that you do has to say something about who you are. That was the thing that I was taught in class. Like, if you walk into a room, I need to know who you are, what you do, without you saying, I'm a lawyer, I, or whatever. Like, it's, you know, sure. I, uh, pick that up. So, if you're a lawyer and you're walking through the door, you've got a briefcase, you've got a suit and a tie. The way that you sit down, you open the briefcase, you take out your files. It's like, oh, dude. This guy's in law. I could see yeah. that. You know? If you're a chef, you walk in, you're rolling up your sleeves, you put your hat on, you tie up your apron, you sharpen the blade. All of those things are so drastically different. Yeah. And without saying a fucking word, I yeah. know exactly who you are. I can even tell by the way you sharpen your blade if you're meticulous and if you give a fuck about your job or not. That's what's yeah. so cool about acting is it's like, it's multifaceted. It's not just remembering lines and, you know, being pretty. In Kramer versus Kramer, Dustin Hoffman and his, his son now, he's just been divorced at the beginning of the film and he's cooking breakfast with his son and the eggs are breaking and stuff is falling over and he, you know, there's like a fire on the stove and it's just, it's a disaster, right? Mm-hmm. By the end of the movie, once he's kind of sorts, starts to like sort his life out and deal with this horrible circumstance he's dealing with with his ex-wife, Now, when he's making breakfast in the morning, it's, he's got it. He's making the eggs. He knows what to do. He's telling you that he's in control. That's so amazing about, you know, old cinema. Now it's just, you know, you've got two people on screen and the camera just does this for no fucking reason. It's (laughs) It's just because nothing is happening and we just need to see something moving in the background. Otherwise, just a picture of someone talking. Yeah, as Hitchcock would say, it's so funny. I I love this stuff though, like process yeah. and talking about levels, because like acting is really hard. Nobody talks about that. They're like it's it's a it's a craft. It is a technique, and like yeah. you can't just be like, oh, I'm an actor. You're like, yeah, but like for real, for real. Because respect, if you are, yeah. it's not as easy as as people think it is. No, it's true. I'm actually there's a scene I'm putting together from There Will Be Blood. Uh, oh. which is actually, Ooh. one of the reasons why I've got the facial hair. Perfect. Somebody had requested that I did There Will Be Blood. And okay. I, for one, I love that movie, but also Daniel Day Lewis's work has always um, aspired me, inspired me, yeah. and intimidated me. And Rightfully so. I thought, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, um, I thought uh, if, if I'm going to do There Will Be Blood, the least I could do is grow my own fucking mustache. There you go. What, what's what's the you going to do? Can you tell me? Yeah, you there's a couple. To. There's a couple that I'm looking at. Well, and here's the other thing too, because I also want to get into like TikTok and the views and stuff. Yeah, of course. Is, kind of wonky, mm-hmm. but um, uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to do the scene where he, uh, where he goes, uh, uh, 
uh, I've abandoned my child. Oh yeah. I've abandoned my boy. I've abandoned my boy. Yeah. Give me the water. Give me the water. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am a sinner. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I want to do that one. And I want to do the scene where, where he's, he's talking to that other guy, the guy from the mummy. Uh-huh. I, uh-huh. I don't know his name, but you know, that kind of like weird lanky guy from the mummy that they run into all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like the comic relief. Uh, he's talking to him and he's like, uh, I just don't know if I can do this with these people. Yeah. <laughs> I just find that I've been debating whether or not I want to do that as like the Daniel Day Lewis, you know, uh, that I put up on TikTok or mm-hmm. if I should put on uh, Joker paint and, and Ooh, do it like that. Yeah. yeah. It's a thing. It's like there, there's always a there's always a thing. It's almost a blessing in the curse, the Joker stuff. How long does that take the makeup? about an hour and a half like Ooh. legit i'm such a perfectionist that it lit and then it's not even just that any video that you see where i'm doing joker stuff mm-hmm. um my hair is literally keyframe tracked and colored on the computer really yeah so why do a, you do this to yourself <laughs> i know well the problem is that um uh so if i'm creating this universe that the joker exists in Mm-hmm. Joker's not going to be in my apartment. He's just not. Good point. Good point. Just, right? I respect I, that. We could have a purple and green light. It's not going to make a difference. Mm-hmm. So he's got to be where he would be in an alley, in a I don't know, in his lair or in Gotham. Like that's that's the environment that he exists in. And if I'm creating this kind of material, in order for it to be believable and not just look like I'm one of those other guys just putting on makeup, sure. And, scenes you know i want to really pull people in but also because i'm a filmmaker i want to make like little one minute shorts as much as i can you know sure sure um so if i'm green screening myself i have to acknowledge that there's a screen behind me Mm -hmm. that's green that also matches the color of my Uh, hair uh. so when i key it out i'm missing half my head now I had oh. this thought. Yeah, I had this thought. Um, a buddy of mine had suggested it to actually just paint my hair orange. Oh, uh, which I had never, I hadn't even that's smart considered that. Yeah. So now that might be something I might look, uh, I might look into, or just getting an orange screen. But sure, I don't want it to take away from skin pigment. Yeah, that's true. The reflection and stuff that's as well. The trickiest mm-hmm. part, man. Like green. You can take green out and it and it looks really good. Blue is really tricky. I tried mm-hmm. it um, with the Joe. I did a test run with the Joker where I had my hair all done up, but then I had the purple outfit on. And when I keyed myself with ah. the blue, my whole fucking outfit almost disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> and I just was like, wow, there's no way around this. Huh? Okay. <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. But nothing is as bad as dropping like 600 bucks on Grinch uh, stuff. Oh, yeah. I saw those. Yeah. Also looks like a lot of prep. (laughs) So the Grinch makeup was like two and a half hours. That took forever. Yeah. And um, so I would do the Grinch makeup and then I would put all the the outfit on that I picked up just little bits and pieces from, from Amazon. And I was like, dude, if I'm not going to be able to see my family this year for Christmas, I was like, if I can just be everybody's Grinch or whatever, and like (laughs) TikTok Grinch, like I'll be, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. It'll give me something to work for. Yeah. And I started posting those videos and they just flopped. All of them flopped. And, and by flop, I mean, like I was normally, I was used to seeing anywhere from 50 to a hundred thousand views on my Mm -hmm. videos. Nice. And, and, or 30 to a hundred. We'll see that. That's a little more. Still a lot. It, it, yeah, it was, it was nuts, but it was like, that was expected. Um, sure. So it was motivating. If I'm getting that kind of an audience that like, I'm going to step up. Right. Sure. Sure. And I start doing these videos and I was getting 2000 views. Really? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then I came across this guy who had a TikTok channel from last Christmas, that was only the Grinch. And oh. he had the prosthetics and like the whole thing. And he did the the voice and the whole, and I was looking at this guy going like, 
somebody's obviously applying this makeup and everything because I there's no like I can't I don't have the manpower physically sure. to do all of this shit just by myself. Right. Like that's a team. So, yeah. But no, yeah. 100% it is. And yeah. so I was just like, all right, you know what, man? Power to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to find another, I got to find something else. Yeah. And I, you know, it's a great Christmas movie, but to me, Christmas Vacation is mm-hmm. the ultimate Christmas movie. Sure. So I said, okay, um, I'll just put myself in that. Perfect. And uh, for the cost of a $40 cardigan, those <laughs> videos blew up. They yeah. blew up. It was nuts. In fact, I got hit up. This was the, and this is the wonderful thing about the power of social media. Mm-hmm. I got hit up on uh, Christmas Eve uh, by this young girl on Instagram. Uh, and she said, oh, I just showed my parents your... Uh, your Christmas vacation videos. And they thought it was hilarious. They are, they thought it was hilarious. They think you're really good. You know, this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now I've gotten comments like that before from people like on TikTok and stuff. This was on Instagram sure. and this girl was verified. And okay. uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, who is this girl? What's her deal? And uh, I come to find out that it's uh, Al Pacino and Beverly D'Angelo's daughter. Oh. Beverly Angelo, as you know, is in the is in the vacation movies. Yeah, yeah. So she's showing her these movies. Like what? And I was just like, I hit her back and I was like, this is like the best Christmas gift I think I've yeah. ever <laughs> got in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Um that's so cool. It's nuts, man. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what happens when you do your own thing too. Because everyone's, yeah. you know, chasing the thing down the road. But if you do your own thing, I find that yeah. you find way more success going that way. Yeah. Well, and also, too, that there's like, I notice it with myself, like my ego gets in the way a lot when mm-hmm. it comes to like being a perfectionist or whatever. Sure. And so on TikTok, you know, they say, oh, you have to niche down, you know, if you want to grow. And sure, maybe you do, because I'm, you know, I've really hit a bit of a plateau on my channel where they're they're just really they just don't want to push my content sure yeah it's super aggravating uh sure sure especially the amount of work you know i i can understand that well that's the thing so but here's the thing though too is is that you know one door closes another door opens and it's not always going to be easy it's not always going to be you know fun and games Mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks i've been kind of going through this um like almost creative depression Mm -hmm. where I get really excited about making a video and then I put everything into it and then I post it and then it, it just does not do well. Like I'm lucky to get a hundred likes in the whole day. Right. Now at a hundred and almost 170,000 followers, that's fucking obnoxious. Yeah. So it started really as much as I was like, no, this doesn't affect me. Like I, I, it's not about the views. And honestly, it's not, but then why the fuck did I spend all last year working my ass <laughs> off to build this up when right. I'm doing literally the same, if not worse than when I started. Right. You know, like there was, I was gaining, mm-hmm. like, I'll be honest with you. I'm losing my, my analytics. Look at this. <laughs> I'm really? losing now 25 to 35 followers a day. Really? Doesn't matter what I post. My shit is just, just for no reason. Oh, that's yeah. so weird. And I have no idea why I've been hit up by a couple of different creators who have told me that I need to create a new account. Mm-hmm. Um, and as much as I appreciate that, I don't know that I want to, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't. I've got everything attached to this. Yeah, one. stay strong. You know what's happening? It's like in space, like, you know, they talk about the slingshot. Yeah. You know, you have to go around the moon to slingshot yeah. back. That's what's yeah. happening. That's uh, yeah, what's happening. and that's that's kind of the thing. And so I started looking at things from a different angle. Sure. Uh, and I started talking to different people, like through Clubhouse and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, a buddy of mine who did really, really well, he had like 10 million followers on Vine or something. Back in the Goodness. Day. I, and the funny thing is, is I honestly don't know anything about that existence for him. Like to me, he's just my buddy. Sure. Uh, I, I had no idea. I was not involved with Vine. Although mm-hmm. years later, I wish I fucking was. Yeah. <laughs> don't we all? 
Don't be gone. <laughs> yeah. So he was telling me when he was in New Orleans, he had like 300,000 followers. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he moved to Los Angeles and he started collaborating with people. And, uh, and, uh, and he went from, th- he said 300,000 to like 6 million in a month. Ooh. And I just, a, a little light went off and I just went, things are opening up. I got to switch this up. Yeah. It's, it's time to, uh, it's time to, you know, play the field a little bit, you know, that's the game. It's like yeah. the old, old YouTube, you know, you'd have people yeah. have their channels and then they collab and that's how it works. You and know? that's how it works, baby. Mm-hmm. So, hey, uh, it makes you feel better. You are now going to be sharing a list with Call Me Chris, Gemma Weston, and Mr. Hamilton on the interesting Mr. podcast Hamilton, feed. And, uh, I love that guy. Love that guy. He's the best. He's the best. So he, now, um, now you're on the same list. Good job. <laughs> I love it, dude. I appreciate that. I see his stuff all the time. I like him. He cracks me up. And I support mm-hmm. his journey. I've reached out to him a couple of times uh because he was coming to los angeles and i've got a i've been out here for 12 years like i filtered through all the assholes yeah i've got a solid crew of people that actually give a shit but i reached out to him and was and you know was like hey man like i support your journey and and i think what you're doing is really cool and blah 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 blah. and then i was having brunch one afternoon and i was doing a live tiktok while i was eating you know with my buddies sure came in and my feet exploded and I had all these people yelling at me like, pay attention! Because I'm eating pancakes. I'm not paying attention sure. to anybody. Uh, and then I got hit. I had all these DMs and people were like, Mr. Hamilton came into your live feed. And then I saw that he was following me and was like, holy shit. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I don't think he's seen one of my fucking videos <laughs> since that day. <laughs> that's funny the feed man it's wild and it becomes this thing where like so taron edgerton he did this video where he talked about some of the best actors he's ever met never caught a break so there's so much luck involved but i've also learned over the last five and a half years of this show that luck is preparation meets opportunity yeah so by you continuing to do your thing Mm -hmm. it's all about the right person seeing it at the right time and your stuff is genuinely good and I don't mean that like it's good for TikTok or it's good for an indie creator. I mean, just good, which is crazy. So you keep doing it because it's I really tough, like it. Man. Like I, I came from, you know, when I made Schism, I was like, oh, I'm going to make a short film and then I'm going to make a feature and then I'm going to do this. Thing, always, right, always. Whatever. And then I made Schism and uh, and I and I was like, wow, I made a like I made a movie like I'd never done anything like that before. And I edited it and. I did, you know, I, I, my friend Yoni, f- for the most part, was the editor on it. But like, I edited the entire, the first cut of it, and then sure. I gave it to him, and, nice. um, and then we both worked on it. But after I finished that, it was like, okay, well, what's the next thing gonna be? Mm-hmm. I got really excited about. Um, I had this sort of like epiphany one night that uh, I wanted to sort of deep dive into the Manson family. Oh, and sweet. I, yeah, and I'm not, I'll tell you, I'm not entirely sure why it hit me. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, I'm into criminal psychology. I, I love it, genuinely love it. Sure. Um, and schism was a part of that, that passion. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you know, I the can criminal see it. psychology component. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, because that really happened, like that, that mm. situation really happened. There's a little clip at the very end of the movie. Yeah. That's an actual clip from the real shooting. Really? Uh, yeah. That's wild. I was actually shooting a movie in January and one of the girls on set was there when it happened and I showed her the movie and she cried. Uh, ah. She was there when like, yeah. she was dodging bullets basically when that shit was going on. And one of the reasons why I had never released it was because I, I, I had never got the rights from the actual guy. So I changed the names around and all this stuff. And sure. And then I just kind of was like, man, that's for me. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that'll be my, my film school, you know, all sure. the movie. And then I showed up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so then basically I started doing all this research on Charles Manson and, and like, you know, how you were talking to me about research, dude, I read five, 
I read five books. I read uh, Helter Skelter, the the Vincent Bugliosi book, Lynn mm-hmm. Fromm's book, Would You Die for Me, the Tex Watson book. Um, uh, what were the other two? Well, regardless, those are the ones I remember the most. Uh, mm-hmm. And I wanted to basically adapt a film essentially from Tex Watson's book, who was the guy who actually did the killings. Right, right. Um, there was something that struck me. And the night that I had came up with this concept to do a Manson movie, uh, genuinely, and this is what was so kind of like the stars aligned sort of, it was like the 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 40th anniversary or something like it was literally oh. the night of the Tate murders what? and I was like what the fuck and also because my last name is Tate yeah that's totally fucked then I come to find out so the night of the Tate murders right a bunch of people died that mm-hmm. night um and then the next night was the LaBianca house mm-hmm. Sharon Tate the night before has the same last name as me mm-hmm. and Mrs. LaBianca who was murdered the night after has the same birthday as me. What? How fucked is that, dude? Don't release it. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Keep, keep, it, keep it between us. <laughs> I know. So I was like, wow. So I was like, okay, this is really crazy. So I started doing all this research on it. And there was a lot of like connections that I made. Um, what I think I was the most fascinated with was like, how did this guy convince all of these people to do this horrible thing? Yeah. And, um, when I started like breaking it down, it was like, yeah, but I'm just a guy who convinced a bunch of people to make a movie. Yeah, that's true. They all believed what I believed wholeheartedly in that time. Right. And they listened to every single word that I said and took it as like Bible scripture until the job was done. Sure. And I start thinking like, fuck, man, like, okay, so this is really interesting stuff. So maybe it wasn't that hard. Maybe it's just that he was like an influential guy. Mm -hmm. And the more work I started like digging into, the more I started learning about these people and how it shifted, how it shifted so drastically. Um like after a certain event happened, like they were hanging out with the beach boys mm-hmm. and they, they were staying at uh, at a residence on sunset Boulevard, right? Where sunset Boulevard and Rogers, uh, Roy Rogers, uh, whatever the street is, Roy Rogers is. Um, they were all staying there with Dennis Wilson, who was the drummer of the beach boys. Jeez. And while they were staying there with this guy, they spent the whole summer there with him. Charles Manson was a musician. He right. was like a really sort of eccentric kind of blues musician who had a bit of a criminal history, but it wasn't, it wasn't really like anything nuts. Like he had robbed stuff and like broken into places, but it was like, he was a crook, you know what sure. I mean? Sure. Yeah. He wasn't the guy that we all. See right. He wasn't a cult time, leader right? at the time. <laughs> yeah. So, and this was the thing. So it was like, the more I kind of dived into this, the more I started learning I went to the Spawn Ranch where they lived. I'd been oh. there a couple of times. Wow. Um, you know, I spent some time there and wrote a little bit, like, while I was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw, you know, I went to the houses where, where everybody, you know, was killed at and kind of just, like, retraced the steps. And um, meanwhile, as I'm sort of putting all of this together, I had also had this concept of, like, uh, a short film. I wanted to write a Western and... It's sure. Just something that I needed to do to take my mind off of what I was actually right. Cause that's subject matter is so intense. Yeah. So heavy sticks around. Yeah. I mean, like I was invited to be a part of a web forum where I was given transcripts and tapes mm. of interviews and I listened to all of them and transcribed them and came up with a fucking treatment it's it wasn't even i didn't even totally finish it but it was like a timeline that's like 75 percent done which accurately from all of these different sources say where these people were on what exact day they were wow. and i have looked over by people that were experts in this kind of shit yeah you know? um and i was really excited about it and meanwhile i'm writing this little western and the concept for the western was like what if 
what if all the criminals and reservoir dogs had great grandfathers <laughs> and they got together and did a robbery and this is where they learned all the silly rules like this I is why it. we need colors and instead of names and blah 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 sure so it was just sort of almost uh, almost yeah it, it was like a silly little thing that i was throwing together right yeah mostly just to take my mind off of what i was working on and then i get a i get hit up uh from a buddy of mine this was the day of the eclipse this was like two or three years ago mm -hmm. there was a solar eclipse and my buddy hits me up and he goes quentin tarantino is at the arc light rest in peace arc light by the way quentin tarantino steven spielberg christopher nolan martin scorsese fucking do something <laughs> you want to stand up with cinema you want to save the movie theaters this is my fucking neighborhood. This right, yeah. is the best movie theater in Hollywood. <laughs> right. If you don't fucking save it, honestly, <laughs> just as full of shit as everyone else who says they want to save theaters. Come on. <laughs> Christopher Nolan in the fucking bathroom at Arclight. He's got <laughs> to do something. Anyway, I love all of them and I admire them so deeply. I'm saying all of this out of love and taking the piss. But of do course. something. Of course. Um, they seem to love the Arclight too. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> call to I action. Mean, the best possible thing that could happen is they invest in it and they bring it back to life or Netflix invests in it and brings it back. to yeah. life. Whatever. It's the Cinerama Dome. I mean, it's, it's, it's in Quentin's movie once upon a time in Hollywood. It's yeah. You know, so I get hit up by a buddy of mine and he says, uh, as I Quentin Tarantino, this story, sure. back to what we were saying, <laughs> um, he goes, Quentin's at the arc light right now. And he's playing his 35 millimeter cut of Reservoir Dogs, and he's giving a Q and A. What I can sneak you in, maybe, but you have to come now. So get. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck the solar eclipse!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I run up the street. I get there. I'm wearing like almost what I'm wearing now. Sure. And I walk into the movie theater, and there's a bunch of film students, and it's like. It, it felt almost like a first day of school kind of thing. Like everybody was kind of dressed nice, you know, and then there's sure. no sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I start talking to some of the people in the line and, uh, and then I just kind of like bleed into the line, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, Get in there. Yep. So now I'm just <laughs> chatting with these people in the line and they're like, so do you go to, do you go to the school? And, and I was like, uh, no, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just here. I'm here for the movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I kind of didn't really say too much or, or how I got there rather, but I was like, yeah, I'm just here for the movie. Smart, smart. So the line is huge. The line is massive. I bet. And we're Tarantino. Walking into the movie theater. Yeah. We're walking in the movie theater and uh, I take a right to go to the front row. Mm -hmm. And the guys that I was talking with take a left to go somewhere in the middle because that's the best place to watch a movie sure and i was like guys where are you going and they're like we're gonna we're gonna try and find spot in the middle and i was like are you fucking insane quentin tarantino's giving a, a q and a yeah like, <laughs> we've uh, seen this movie yeah and they're like Dude, i don't it's, uh, my neck's gonna get sore i'm like fuck your neck dude. yeah <laughs> so i sat front row center watched the movie like this you yeah, know? of course <laughs> um just close your eyes you've seen it yeah, you got, you got this. Listen, I didn't give a fuck. It was like yeah. just the cigarette burns in the top corner was enough for me. I'm like, this is perfect. This is just cinema at its finest. That's right. And it comes out and he gives a and a And at one point he's talking about how he sets up a shot. And there's this young girl sitting next to me and, 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 and he gets down on his knee and he, and he's telling her like how he sets up a shot and she's right next to me. Uh -huh. and there was a picture taken from that, from that day. I've seen and it in the picture. Oh, he's seen it. It looks like he's talking to me. It does. It does. It does. It I looks like he's giving you a lesson. Her. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I almost hijacked it from her. Yeah. <laughs> um, but true story. It was at that meeting that he said he was doing a movie about Charles Manson. And really? My whole fucking two years prior to that just like tossed up in a ball and yeah. thrown out the window. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't fucking believe it. Yeah. It was, and I didn't know what the movie was going to be about, but it was like, there's no fucking way I'm releasing any kind of movie pertaining to Charles Manson at the same time that Quentin's doing a movie about him. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I got to wrap it up. 
you know, that's it. I went home and I was really discouraged. And uh, frankly, I was a little angry at Quentin because he is never in his fucking whole career <laughs> done anything like this. Sure. <laughs> He just stole your idea, just cause. It uh, literally <laughs> felt like he was watching me for two years and was like, "I'm gonna do this thing." So wait, okay. his last name's Tate. Like, yeah, 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 that'll do. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, I'm so aggravated. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna double down on this western, and I'm gonna make like a, like a Reservoir Dogs y sort yeah. of western. That'll but learn him. Like, well, but then, like, even with the research, I was like, no, no, no. no. But I don't want it to be Reservoir Dogs. Right. You know, I love that movie. I'm like, I, that's not what I want it to be. So sure. what was Reservoir Dogs? Reservoir Dogs was the last 10 minutes of City on Fire. Mm -hmm. This Chow Yun Fat movie from 1989. And uh, so that's, so I went to that. That's there you go. I used. And then sure. sort of just through happenstance, it kind of, it took things from here and there and wherever. And um, originally, the the girl in the film who, you know, gets on the horse and the whole thing, uh -huh. um, I wrote that part for me. Oh. So I wanted to sort of pitch myself to Hollywood, I guess, as right. like, I can be the Western guy. Sure. Hello. I right. can be Clint Eastwood, too. I can be whatever you want me to be, you know? Right. And I went and had brunch. Uh one weekend and i was with uh two of, two of my buddies that are that are in the movie the two the guys who play the two brothers oh yeah yeah okay um i went and had uh, brunch with them one weekend and this girl comes and her name is chloe and that's who played the the girl on the horse mm -hmm. um and when she sat down and like showed me pictures of her instagram where she's like shooting a bow and arrow off of a horse and everything yeah. i was like holy fuck yeah right. <laughs> Like there is something here, dude. There's yeah. in here. Yeah. Um, so then I rewrote the whole thing around her. Oh, uh, okay. And then it became, I, then I, it was weird. Like, and then I ended up doing a bunch of research on what it was to be a woman in that time period. I read mm -hmm. this book called uh, Soiled Doves. Oh, uh, okay. It's about prostitution in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And man, holy fuck, one in three women were prostitutes. Really? One in three in those Sheesh. days. If you wanted to be a business owner, you had to be a prostitute who then would become a madam, who would then really? run a brothel, who would then have your own wealth. What? That was basically how you did it. Yeah. That's wild. Oh, it's fucked. Well, hey, um, you did a good job incorporating that. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, good. It, it, you know, I grew up in a family that's all, all women. Like, there's me and my dad, and then there's, you know, I, I grew up with two sisters. I found out I have a third sister later on in life, so I've got another sister. Been there. You know, my mom. Um, and when I read that book, it was, uh, it was really, um, it was really messed up. It was really yeah. messed up because it was they basically were saying like the majority of my family would have had to have sold themselves for sex just to fucking make a living. Now, here's yeah. the thing. If you didn't do that, then you were either a farmer, in which case then most of the other women just considered you another man for the most mm -hmm. part. Like you weren't woman enough, you know, sure. uh, or you were just a housewife, which right. they were basically seen and not heard for the most right. part. Right. So there wasn't much of an existence there, you know. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. And uh, for a very, very, very long time. And the awful yeah. thing, too, is that as a prostitute, there was only a shelf life. Like if you and a, a short one at that. So if you worked at a brothel and you were there for let's just say you're there for four years, mm -hmm. you, you would almost be considered like old news. Like oh. you're, you're, you're <laughs> already you're already like last year's news sort of sure thing. so you had to you know um, you had to unless you were like anybody who makes content now like if you appease to a large group then people are always going to want your stuff right was, you know it's kind of similar in that sense but like for the most part you know not a lot of girls were lucky like that and they yeah. would have to you know go to a different um go to a different 
brothel or whatever it was. Yeah. Actually, reading this book where I learned why they call it the red light district. Oh. Um, the the miners would basically go to the bar and look for a woman because that's what they did. Mm-hmm. Um, and they would leave their lanterns outside, and their lanterns were red. So ah. how you do people were in the bar, like frequenting the, um, you know, the girls, is if you saw all the red lanterns. Uh, lined really. Up the bar. Oh, yeah. I didn't it, know that. It, Skid Row is is a was a was a term for the loggers that would pull the large logs of wood oh. and, and sort of just leave them there. So it was a bit of more of like a roughneck part of town, but it was also very industrial. That was the skid uh-huh. row. It was all the skids of wood that they would have laid That's out. That's neat. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Almost mm-hmm. as crazy as deciding to do a Western in one take. Why? Yeah. Why? 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 Because <laughs> everybody said I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I wish that there. This is this is sort of the thing that you learn, you know, when you make movies. Like, um, the film didn't have to be made in one take. It right. Didn't. Agreed. But, but I made it in one take because I wanted to. Because yeah. I wanted to see if I could do it, and uh-huh. because that style of filmmaking is something that I love so much. Sure. It's the closest. Thing to theater to live oh, for theater, sure uh that you can get i think in a cinematic experience agreed and um i actually crack jokes about the awful kind because when i submitted it to festivals uh i spent like i sold my car basically to finish that movie and i sent i spent like three grand to submit it to almost every festival i could sure and we got into three what and, yeah and, really yeah and I had gotten written letters from uh, some festivals, uh, Sidewalk, Austin, from the actual programmers. And they basically said, I wish we could have screened your film, but it's too long. Oh. So, this was really That's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, this was really aggravating because um, any filmmaker that I've talked to about this film, I've seen their eyes go like this. Yeah. Any, when we were, when we were editing the movie and we were doing the color correction, the guy who wrote The Descendants Mm -hmm. was literally in the room watching the fucking movie with us. Dude. uh, And was genuinely impressed. Probably until I said, I thought I recognized him from somewhere. (laughs) Because (laughs) I thought he was a guy that I saw at the gym. And he definitely <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> and after he left, everyone was like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. He should have taken it as a compliment, though. He was looking kind of jacked at the time. That's right. Uh, That's right. But yeah, it was one of those experiences of like, uh, listen, it's kind of been the story of my career where I've, I've done stuff that's really blown people's minds. And mm-hmm. for some whatever reason, maybe it's lessons that I need to learn still. I'm not sure what it is. Um, nothing happens with it that's uh, wild. you're yeah. ahead of the time that's what it is people aren't could ready be. could be it's really like your stuff some of the worst stuff i've ever seen i'm in it so i yeah, it's nice I when you, <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> so it's when i see something really good i scream it from the mountaintops and like that's the good. awful kind having my western was called blisters and okay. it's literally just my character talking to a horse oh. the whole time and it's okay. re- it's like sad and emotional and like talking about survivor's guilt and like still being there. He he's buried everybody else. Something, yeah, that's kind of the vibe I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think you'd like it. But anyway, okay. Send uh, it to you. I actually want to watch this. Deal, deal. And so that's doing the festival circuit now, and like what's doing one oh. thing. So I feel you. But with the awful yeah. kind, it's like knowing how movies are made now. I'm like, okay, first things first. Was all that dialogue ADR? Because if not, how were you moving the camera around and not like scuffling your feet? And like, um, how, how was rehearsals for this? Like, uh, talk to me about this. So I wore moccasins. Um, uh, okay. I shot it so my Mark? feet didn't creak. Um, the way that we had sort of rehearsed it was so that originally we were going to put pads on the bottoms of people's feet so that we didn't hear it stomping around. Uh-huh. But then when we got into the space, there, there wasn't really a lot of movement. And when there was movement, we actually kind of wanted to hear it. Yeah. Um, so basically how that worked was um, 
there's there's two parts in that movie that are fully ADR. We had okay. one sound woman who was literally in charge of nine channels. What? So she what a hero. Nine voices going on in her head. Well, that's not even true. I think we only had seven or eight labs. Oh. Seven labs, and then we were booming. Yes, and then we were booming the rest of it. What? So the girl, the girl at the end, she's ADR'd. The the sheriff is ADR'd, and that's okay. it. Wow. Everybody else was mic'd. Yeah. That's um, what doing things the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That was actually an interesting because the wardrobe, the wardrobe and the sound girl kind of got into it um, at one point. The wardrobe didn't understand why the sound girl kept insisting that the actors had their full wardrobe on. Mm -hmm. You got to think that like how we were doing this was, I hate saying unorthodox, but it was weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and this wardrobe lady, um, very very good she's fucking awesome i love her i'd hire her again in a heartbeat same with the sound girl they're they're amazing both of them mm -hmm. but the the wardrobe she didn't understand really what was going on like she was like uh, we're rehearsing you know why do they need to be in full wardrobe like this is she didn't know right really what we were doing and when they had kind of gotten into it um i told her to watch the the monitor because i'm not sitting in a fucking room while my movie sure. was getting made watching a TV. That's not what I'm doing. Right. I was in the room with those people and they were performing for me. Hell um, yeah. And so, uh, and I was picking up, you know, guns that fell on the ground or hats that came off. I had all of that oh. stuff in my hand. So what, ha what happened was when she watched it on the, the dailies, you know, mm -hmm. she was like, holy fuck <laughs> <laughs> had no idea and then after that because her concern was that she didn't want the wardrobes to get fucked up mm -hmm. and and rightly so i'll tell you this is nuts when we got the wardrobes for that movie mm -hmm. uh we went to universal studios um to look at the wardrobe that they had there mm -hmm. and though they had a lot they didn't have what we were looking for. Sure. They just didn't. I could feel it immediately. Um, and I spoke to the woman who ran the wardrobe stuff there. And she said, you should probably, if you're doing a Western and it's like a period piece. You should probably go check out, you know, United, uh, United Western costumes or whatever. Right. Sure. So I was like, okay, cool. So we drove over and walked in and it was very like wood paneling on the walls, like very okay, okay. old fashioned feeling, you know? Yeah. And uh, good vibes. I didn't, I didn't say anything to anybody. I just let everybody assume that I had a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> Smart. Smart. I had, I had about, I think dollars for wardrobe left like Ooh, that's it that goes yeah, fast it's not a lot. that goes fast and there's, and there's nine fucking actors yeah what so hard way I, I quickly learn when i get to this united uh american uh i honestly can't remember the name of them it's been so long i'd have to look them up but they're great they're, they're credited in the film united i think it's united american mm -hmm. um and uh, I find out that these are the people were given a tour by this sweet old lady who had absolutely no sense of humor. And I thought that was hilarious. So I just kept <laughs> cracking jokes and she just was not taking any of it. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> and I would constantly, like we're walking around the warehouse, you know, tough crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, she basically was like, yeah, we did the wardrobe for Tombstone and oh. Titanic. And, and I was like, holy shit. Oh. So <laughs> finally we get to the very end of the tour. It's taken this poor lady like 45 minutes to give us the tour of the whole place. It's huge. Sure. It's like the matrix when he says he wants guns and like, there's yeah. just, <laughs> yeah. that's what it was like. You want a vest? Wow. Let's go to the vest warehouse. Yeah. Where probably a hundred <laughs> thousand vests to choose from so um at the very end of it the the lady goes uh 
Okay, so now that you've basically seen everything, uh, what's your budget? Oof. Oof. And I was like, well, I've got about 1700 bucks. And she looks me dead in the eye. And she's like, I'll be honest, you're not going to be able to get one outfit for $1,700. Oh, no. And I said, well, that's going to be a problem because I've got nine people to dress. <laughs> so uh, I said to her, uh, let me speak to the, who runs this place? Let me speak to her, right? So I get brought into this office and I've, I've made a pitch deck for the film. This was how I was going to get money. Smart. So I made a pitch deck for it. And the pitch deck took me a month to put together. Mm -hmm. It basically broke everything down. It was 18 or 19 pages, I think. And I designed it to look like an old sort of like dossier that you would find in the 1800s. So when you opened it up, you'd see like old Ooh. Polaroid that had the little triangle corner pieces and all the actors' faces were Photoshopped onto like garments that I had literally just sort of put together using different photos and stuff. And dude. Um, and then I had spent, you know, a whole day just searing the edges with a lighter. I burnt my thumbprint completely <laughs> off. And um, I'm sitting in the office with this woman and she's looking through it. Uh, well, the first thing she says before she looks through it is uh, I don't do short films and <laughs> I don't work with indie low budgets. So what the fuck do well, you want? That's what she said. To me. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, and so I handed her over the pitch deck. And this is how I knew this woman was legit. Yeah. Um, people don't rub it in your face like intelligent people. Like dummies will be like, no, nah, you're stupid. I'm not going to listen to you, blah, 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 blah. Right? Sure. An intelligent person will figure out a way to quiz you on what it is that you've done to right. see if you've actually done the work. Sure. So she's going through the book and she looks at the sheriff wardrobe that I had put together and uh, and she goes, oh, he's got, a, he's got a badge on his shoulder here, like a Civil War badge. How old was he in the Civil War? And I was like, oh, no, he was, he didn't fight in the Civil War. He was like nine. Like there, that didn't happen. Um, that was just a concept, you know, for an outfit like, color scheme that kind of vibe like the blues and the white like that's kind of what i want with him mm -hmm. and she closed the book and she just looks at me and she goes have you ever seen uh lonesome dove the series oh. and i i no like i hadn't seen <laughs> right i had watched every fucking western leading up to this right <laughs> yeah and of course she goes have you seen lonesome dove and i said listen i'm gonna be honest with you i saw it a long time ago I, there you I go even tell you, there you, go. The fuck, you know what i mean <laughs> i might have to watch it again if that's like a thing she goes i won't do business with anybody who hasn't seen that show um and i said okay so then i'm gonna fucking i'll rewatch it no problem sure. right of course i'll, fucking, I'll have it rewatched by tomorrow she there goes, go. okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to make this work for you. That's what she says to me. We're going to make this work for you, and we're going to make it fit your budget. Dude. I spent the next two days uh, watching Lonesome Dove, and uh, I hit her up. We sent her flowers. Uh, one of my producers and I uh, sent her flowers to thank her for the whole thing. It was like a huge bouquet of flowers. Yeah. And I said to her the next time I saw her, when we were actually doing the, the wardrobe fittings and everything, I said, um, I'm so glad I didn't fully lie to you <laughs> in your <laughs> office that day because um, Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Duvall's cowboy hats were hanging outside of her office. If I had said that I watched that show oh. and didn't recognize those iconic fucking hats oh, no. this is why i'm saying this woman's a fucking genius yeah she knew she knew the second i walked in i was like wow there's their hats and she's like you watched it <laughs> <laughs> what, a what a yeah. test what a test 
Oh man. Wow. What a badass yeah, lady. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she's she... awesome, dude. Her name is Diana. She's fucking awesome. If I could work with her on every movie until I die, I'd be happy. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. She, and that was how we got the wardrobe. Like the wardrobe was really? all legitimate. Yeah. I, I actually wanted to get um uh oh uh, um Ian McShane, is that mm -hmm. his name? Who played yep, Deadwood. Yep. Deadwood. So I had his actual wardrobe set aside from the show with the little golden nugget and the vest and everything. Yeah. And it didn't fit the actor that I had had oh, it set aside for. So close. Who was, the, who was the brother who comes in, you know, at the end? Yeah. So we, we gave him one that looked similar to it, but was a couple inches smaller. Um, oh. and I was really butthurt about that because I actually tried on Ian McShane's outfit and it fit me like a smack in the mouth. What? Oh, <laughs> like the, the jacket. I was like, God damn. <laughs> can't win them all. Can't win them all. No, you, you know? can't win them all. <laughs> Did she see it when you were done? I hope so. Honestly, I, I, I don't know. Um, there, this, this is sort of the shitty thing about that whole experience. Um, I produced that movie, and this is this is Hollywood. You know, if people are making movies, they got to hear this shit. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say it. Please do. I I produced that movie uh, with a friend of mine that I was very close with. He was one of my closest friends for ten years. And after the film was made, there I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know what happened. A light bulb in his head went off, or something. I don't know. Sure. Um he decided that he was getting the short end of the stick, even though he was the lead and the producer and he had a credit for contributing to the story. He mm -hmm. wanted a writing credit. He wanted a film by credit and was oh. basically saying, if you don't give me this stuff, I'm going to bury this film. Sheesh. That's so this is my awful. first time experiencing anything like this with anybody, yeah. let alone a close friend. Yeah. Um, and I, I was really, um, I was really crushed. I was genuinely really crushed by this whole, this whole thing, um, and confused. I thought maybe I had done something wrong because uh, he was in the movie, his wife was in the movie, and his brother was in the movie. The brother was the sheriff, the wife was the prostitute, and he was the guy who comes in at the very beginning. Oh. And after the movie was made, and I refused to give him a film by credit because that's a fucking directing credit. Yeah. Um, they all basically came after me. Damn. They started posting documents on Facebook and all of this stuff, things that, that said that he's a writer and all. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Um, it, it was, it was, it was ludicrous, dude. It was fucking ludicrous. Uh, sure. And I couldn't believe it. it was like I was the one that was writing and right. slaving over this thing and spending every waking hour while he's out drinking and, you know, working at the bar. I'm researching the 1800s. Yeah. I'm going, you know, doing a deep dive in prostitution during that time and staring like, down oh, Diana. Yeah. 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 I feel you. So I was like, no, fuck you. I'm not going to give you this. Like, right. I'm putting my foot down. This is where it's going to end, you know? Good uh, for you. And, um, and basically what happened was um, the energy of the film had completely died. So we got into our first festival. That was really exciting. But, sure. but, but it wasn't, but it was also bittersweet because that's when we had this big fight. It was like a week before this festival. Oh, and that he sucks. said to me, I don't give a fuck if they only call the directors up. I'm going to go up there and tell them what the fuck happened. Sheesh. And I was like, what do you mean what happened? So when they only called the directors up mm -hmm. and their question, all the questions were fucking odd, like were, how did sure. you do this movie? Yeah. And I'm up there literally the whole time anticipating him walking on stage taking the mic and being like you know making right. a ass out of the whole thing sure so i could feel the energy had basically died i was heartbroken um yeah i can't imagine yeah and then um and then after i sold my car and uh my girlfriend was driving me around everywhere at the time 
uh and and then i spent three thousand dollars submitting it all around to the festivals he had never contributed a dime to any of that of course so he was come no so when he was coming after me saying i'm gonna take this movie and blah 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 mm -hmm. after you know weeks of sort of going back and forth and me just being like this guy's a manipulative fuck mm -hmm. i sent him a, a receipt an itemized list of everything that he owed production sure. and i never heard from him again well, so that works yeah then i posted the movie on vimeo mm -hmm. um because i had done my festival run and i was exhausted you know we had gotten into three festivals i'll be honest one of the festivals was a complete waste of my fucking time sure. waste of anybody's time honestly <laughs> i couldn't fucking believe i was there sitting in the audience watching this whole thing they were giving awards out to everybody. It was like <laughs> no. they went to fucking Target and picked up a bunch of plastic frames and were like, we're just going to give people participation badges. <laughs> no. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there watching some of these movies and I'm like, this, this movie, right. <laughs> I shot my movie in one take and it's 22 minutes long. This movie looks like it was shot with a fucking Sony camera that came out 20 <laughs> years ago. Sure. I was livid. Uh, right. I was really upset with the festival run and mm. that proceeded into why I started doing social media. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I was really pissed off that I didn't have an audience that I could reach out to, to show them this thing that I was really excited about. Right. Right. And I basically said, never the fuck again. Will I ever make a movie without having my own audience that I can genuinely say, go watch this thing and support what I do. Right. I didn't have, I didn't have things in actors' contracts saying that they had to share it. So that was also another uh, weird thing too, where it was like there were people, some people that were in the movie weren't even sharing it when they should have been sharing it. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Sure. Are you proud of this? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I come to find out that this guy was pulling all these fucking strings behind my back, submitting the film to basically oh. get shitty reviews. Yeah. What? That, yeah. You're shooting yourself in the foot doing that. That's wild. Now, one of the one of the companies that did it was affiliated uh, film film riot. I think is what it is. Gotcha. Okay. And they, they gave us a, a review. They gave us a very bad review. They gave us two out of 10, I think. Really? And one of the, yeah. First of all, they didn't spell my name right for the whole fucking article. Oh, no. Second of all, one of their complaints was there wasn't enough furniture. It's Dude. A, it's a gangster hideout. <laughs> qualm with my fucking movies that there's not enough tables and chairs go <laughs> fuck yourself so i was a like good point Dude, yeah that's a that's that's a good point but that's yeah. actually surprising and also inspiring to hear because even through all of that it's really good like yeah i appreciate that's that man Thank wild you. and like I, i'm i'm glad that i could talk to you about it because i i hope people watch it because it's yeah it's the Some story's really good it's done well like yeah I wanted, I was hoping I would get like a, a staff pick on Vimeo. So I was, when it, when it came out, I was doing all kinds of like Facebook ads and stuff like that to, to pump it up. Sure. And like simultaneously, this prick was off, you know, submitting it to people to get shitty reviews and tearing That's it wild. down. But then what he also did, which was really, really shitty is he posted an old version of it on his YouTube channel. Oh, what? Yeah. Now this was a version of the film that I had basically, cause I didn't want to fight with him. Sure. So I sort of gave him the credit that he won mm -hmm. and, or that he wanted basically. Sure. And I never, it's a fucking short film. There's a minute and a half of credits. Yeah. <laughs> of yeah this. It's true. And, I, and I'm like, dude, we're, and this was my thing. Like after I made schism, the first lesson I learned was, it's not a movie. You're you're not here to make a really elaborate title sequence. Yeah. It's a fucking short film. Yeah. Which means it should start and it should be important mm -hmm. and then it should end shortly yeah. after. There yeah. shouldn't be any any fucking thing else. Yeah, it's not trim, a movie. The, trim the fat. It is streamlined storytelling. I agree. He did not listen to any of that. He said, I don't give a fuck. I want mm. my name at the beginning <laughs> of the movie. Of course. And I just look like you motherfucker. So I knew when I was going to release this thing publicly, 
um, that I wasn't, um, I, I wasn't going to not learn a lesson that I've already sure. learned. Sure, because sure. Because somebody's got a fucking ego. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I was able to back all of this up because we worked on a Star Wars uh, fan film. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, three years prior. And he did the same shit. Only he told me that the guy that he directed it with mm -hmm. was the guy. So I never spoke to him ah, of for course. two years. <laughs> so when this happened, I call, I contacted him. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, man, I want you to tell me what really happened on that Star Wars movie because uh, I may or may not be going through something similar. And word for word, every fucking thing that this guy told, I was on the phone with him for three hours at the end of it. I was in tears. Yeah. Because every single thing that happened to him on Star Wars Mm -hmm. And that Star Wars film, by the way, we won the audience award in 2016. Yeah. I've seen it. It's great. Yeah. It's so great. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's a fun little movie. Yeah. That, the guy, Nick, who's also in my movie, had sure. fucking not, nothing to do with that yeah. movie <laughs> that, that he said he did. I'm telling you right now. It was Jeff. It was all Jeff. Sure. And you look at Jeff's body of work now. Jeff is a, is a storyboard artist for the boys. Yeah. He's like, the guy is so fucking talented. Yeah, and he he told me his side of the story. I basically told him flat on the phone, "I've I've been under the impression that I'm not supposed to like you for the last two and a half years. So I want you to tell me what happened." Mm. Right. When he told he connected, and I realized I was more like him than I had right. realized. Like we shared a lot in common, mm -hmm. um, and that was how I had come to the conclusion that this guy was parasitic. Like this, right? This, he he was legitimately trying to use me as a stepping platform for his own career because sure. he knew he could do it. Right. So, so actually that seems like a pretty common story though, in, you know, the entertainment industry, especially from the acting side of it, but you, I, well, I can that's still, I wanted to tell you because yeah, like whoever I, listening, who's ever is listening to this, like that's, like, I, I, think that's this I agree. I think it's really important to bring the light. Also, it says a lot about you as well. Cause I can still see in your eyes, the care and the love for the craft. Like you yeah. still love acting and you still love filmmaking, even having gone through the nonsense. Well, that's I, pretty good. I, I went, I went from going through all of that shit and mm -hmm. being so angry to making one to three videos every day Ooh. for almost an entire year. I'm at on May 15th. It'll be one entire year that I have with no breaks. Really? One to three videos every fucking day and posted them. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Where, where, where does that come from? Like, <laughs> that's insane work ethic. We're, we're cut from the same cloth. I never sleep. I'm always yeah. doing everything all the time. Like, I'm horrible at free yeah. time. And I see that. Um, yeah, me too. Um, martial arts, man. Yeah. I think I would say it, it's, it's discipline. Like, I, I always say, if I'm the smartest person in the room, then I need to leave and find a new room because there's nothing totally left agree. For me. And I don't give a fuck about all the praise. I'm, I'm genuinely, turned on by like learning new stuff sure and, growing and being told that what i'm doing is wrong because it's like right yeah. <laughs> yeah um now if i walk into a room and i'm not the most disciplined mm -hmm. then i need to work harder totally and so my goal is very much the opposite i'm not trying to be the smartest person in the room uh -huh. but you bet your fucking ass that i am trying to be the most disciplined Damn and right. I, I use that in every aspect of my life. Like sure. my morning routine, I wake up, I meditate now for an hour. Used to be 20 Hell minutes, yeah. now it's an hour. I drop in. Um, and then I go to the gym. And I've been doing this, like meditation. I didn't start until about nine months ago. Really? And now I find that I, I've, I don't know how I went without it, if I'm being honest. Sure. Um, I thought it was some cuckoo shit. <laughs> of course, uh, of course. And I realized that uh, if 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 in religion, you know, the the, the religious texts, the mm -hmm. Bible, the Quran, whatever, sure. are basically guidebooks to living uh, a peaceful human existence, mm -hmm. pertaining to whatever region that they came from. Sure, that's sort of how I would genuine or uh, generally look at like religion organized sure. religion mm -hmm. 
spirituality is the same thing. It's the yeah. same fucking thing. Yeah. Praying in religion is meditating in spirituality. It's the same thing. Yeah, I can see that. And I started realizing like, if this is something that has been discussed and talked about, and then like, I also research, you know, wealthy guys as well. Like I want to sure. know what their routines and things are. Mm -hmm. um, meditation is a common factor in all of these people's everyday yeah. existence. It's true. So I said, okay, well, look, I got nothing to lose. I could try it for a year and it does nothing for me. I, I literally, I got nothing to lose. Yeah, it's true. And now it's like, you know, I had some anxiety shooting this movie uh, in January and um, uh, I went to bed early uh, that night and I was doing the meditation in my head and literally was the thing that um, that took me from having a like a full on panic attack, which I'm not sure used to. Mm -hmm. I don't have them. I've probably only had like three in my whole life. And that was the yeah. third one. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me about an hour, but I just kept saying the things that I say and mm -hmm. my, my affirmations, I guess you call them. Sure. And, and it brought me right down and I woke up and I felt good. And I, that's great. Know, yeah. It's uh, it's a pretty insane thing, man. Um, it, it's good to organize your thoughts and do all that stuff. But like with working out, it's the same thing. Like I'm, I'm consistent with that. And I notice the flaws. Okay. I need to do this differently or I need to sure whatever, but discipline, you know, I never used to believe that uh, I was worthy of having any kind of following. I'd had Instagram mm -hmm. account for, I don't know, seven or eight years. And I just was like coasting on 4,000 followers. And that nice. was because I was doing YouTube videos with people who had like 10 million. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, that wasn't on me. I think I had like 700 followers before that, you know? Sure, sure. And then with TikTok, I had I have this rule in my life. I call it the rule of tandem. If okay. uh, three people tell me something uh, in, a, in an acknowledgeable amount of time. So like if three people tell me something over the course of three years, I'm obviously not going to give a shit. Sure. <laughs> tell me something in a month. Right. I might be like... Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Right. So when the quarantine happened, uh, I had three separate people reach out to me. My sister was one of them. And she was like, you need to get on TikTok. I'm telling oh. you, this is your platform. And I was like, dude, I'm not shaking my ass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. where you went wrong, Justin. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what? That's it. I'm making still, a dance video after this. <laughs> there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot, but if I'm going to give it a shot, just like anything, this is martial arts, Kung Fu is everywhere, whatever it's martial yeah. arts. I go, okay, I'm going to research this. I'm going to figure out what the best strategy is. What's the best plan of attack. I'm not just going to go into this with my fucking hands out going, what do I do? Sure. And I had a bit of a plan of attack and last May I started and I've just been posting every day since then. And some days have been better than others. Sure. Uh, some days have been a lot worse than others. Of course. Uh, um, That's the internet. <laughs> the internet. Uh, but I've genuinely met a lot of um, really cool and really talented people through there. You've probably seen, uh, you've probably seen Semi Stupid. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. So, Semi Stupid and I, Dave, his name's Dave. Uh, we're going to be working together. We've got, I've got to come Hell up with yeah. Two skits for him. Uh, we met up last week on Saturday. Solid dude. I couldn't fucking believe how much we had in common. Uh, I can I see it. We're gonna be doing stuff. He just I hit a million. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's exciting. I I think about like especially hearing about the analytic issues. Think about like um Nate Dog. You know the guy in the skateboard with the cranberry juice and stuff. Oh the. He the 420 like, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he had like hundreds of videos before that one that he was yeah. just doing. And all it takes is that. All it and, takes is that, yeah. You know, it's there, there's well, a connection. They're definitely, I mean, you're right. You're, yep. you're definitely right. Um, there, there's, there's a tricky, there's a, there's a tricky thing when it comes to that. Like if, if you're somebody like him and bless his heart, he, he had that video and it blew up and everybody was doing it and it turned into this unbelievable sensation. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but I guess the real question is what next? Exactly. Exactly. And that's where I think you're, you're set up pretty good. It's yeah. just, it's just spiritual timing at this point. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. your stuff is really, really good across the board. Well, it's now just timing. It so, is. Timing, yeah. I can see it. I can see it. You're doing the work. You, there's the preparation meets opportunity, you yeah. know? And well, like, and, and, and look, I'm also doing, I'm also experimenting too. Like I'm going to post a video good. today and I've already shot it. It's not, uh, it's not anything. It, listen, it's nothing. I did one yesterday. Everybody's doing this, this, this trend where so this guy has oh, like, with the lion noise. The lion thing? tube. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did, I, I did the T Rex from Jurassic Park. Oh, sweet. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So it's like it's not, it's not complicated content. It was an easy one for me to shoot, but I also had a lot of shit to do yesterday. Sure. And today, like after this, I have a meeting after this as well. Mm -hmm. Um. So I did a video today before this in case I wasn't even going to have a chance to shoot anything. You know what I mean? Sure. And there's this weird trend going on right now where people are doing this dance that like they're, how do I like to show you like this? Like, Here we go. Oh, yes. Like that. I've seen this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like, <laughs> it looks like they're vomiting. Yeah. It's so it awkward, like but I love vomiting. it. <laughs> so that's what I shot. <laughs> That's yes what it yes like. i'm in i'm in <laughs> there's actually a line from a seinfeld episode where jerry goes uh it's jerry or george uh goes uh, elaine elaine's dance that's that's not dancing that looks like a full body dry heave <laughs> yeah <laughs> so perfect yeah i've incorporated it so hopefully my seinfeld fans will uh will catch on to that one but uh, I love it. There's, you know, there's one more thing I wanted to say about content. Um, yeah, please. That's kind of interesting is uh, usually the videos that you spend a lot of time working on typically don't take off. And yeah. then the, the videos that you don't spend a lot of time on, they do. Yep. But the satisfaction that you get from putting a lot of time into a video and seeing it take off. Oh, yeah. It's far beyond anything you will ever get from a zero effort video blowing up. Absolutely. A couple of zero effort videos blow up. Mm -hmm. And I could give a fuck. I sure. Fuck. But the sure. one that I genuinely spent a lot of time on that didn't is when I start going like, what the fuck? Or the ones that blew up that did well. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, of course it did. Sure. I knew it would, and it did. Yeah. Um, there's three kinds of content. And so for any content creator that's out there right now. Yeah. Here we go. Here's the three. Here we go. The Justin Tate know. three. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where I learned this. Um, I'm but, learning it from you. I mean, I, well, <laughs> right. But I learned it from somebody and I don't know who it was. Right, yeah. I, you know. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy who's now getting, you know, torn apart right now. Yeah. Everybody's content. Yeah. So wh whoever it was that came up with this, bless your heart. You made my life so much easier. Yes. I'm thank you. About you, whatever you look like, whatever your name is, I'm thinking about you. That's right. Um, the three kinds of content, there's hero content, mm -hmm. there's hub content, uh -huh. and there's help content. I so the hero content would be like the gladiator video or, or mm -hmm. whatever that I did, right? Sure. Hub content. The, the heroes, the stuff that you would show people that want to say, well, hey, what do you do? This is what I do. Right. But you can't make that every day. Sure. And I know this because I've been doing that and I'm <laughs> fucking exhausted. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm tired. So that's why I'm thankful for this list. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, there's hub content, mm -hmm. which is the stuff that, like I call it run and gun filmmaking, the stuff that mm -hmm. you're just like, in the moment, let's just shoot this really quickly. It doesn't need to be polished. Yeah. This, this is this is what it is. This is just to let people know I'm alive. But also, treating the camera like your friend. Mm -hmm. The audience is my best friend. So sure. I I just I'm trying to make you guys laugh, like right. you know, we're being a couple of goofballs, right? Mm -hmm. And then the help content would be like, uh, you know, words of inspiration or. 
like a tutorial video. How did yeah. I, how did I do this, that, and, you know, and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it just helps break things up because uh, I, I literally was waking up every day for this whole year thinking like that everything that I did had to be a green screen, visual effects, right? you know, blockbuster, whatever. And it's, my goal was to do a video every day like that's, you know, that's a hard thing to stay committed to when it takes you nine yeah. fucking hours to, you know, do a visual effect or whatever, you know, yeah. it's a lot. And yeah, you know, there was a hot minute where I thought my strategy of calling TikTok out, like, oh, maybe if I just call them out, they'll be like, hey, maybe something's going on. And my mom hits me up. She's like, I don't think it's working. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Thanks, mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but hey you know you try stuff people i guess got to see a different side of me yeah uh, they got to see a little bit of a more human side of me that's why i won't delete the videos because i'm like sure it's not about perfection it's it's about really the human experience and in, in every capacity and absolutely if i can make you laugh if i can make you think differently if i can snap you out of whatever funk that you're in mm -hmm. whatever, like whatever i don't give a fuck if i make you cry awesome if i make you want to fucking knock your neighbor's teeth in good yeah mx said this once bless his heart that rest in so peace yeah um you know there should be, he goes uh, there should be a song for 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 everything mm -hmm. you know if you want to feel a certain way what are you going to do what do you want to be happy all the time right <laughs> yeah right it's true it's yeah. true that's, yeah. I mean, I think that's important to show that human side because that video about Arthur Mendoza is what made me reach out to you. Yeah. I was like, I was like, this is my guy. That's, you know what? That's awesome, dude. Cause, um, I don't typically, I don't typically talk too much about that kind of stuff. So it was mm -hmm. weird for me to make a video about that. Sure. Uh, because people are very protective of Stella's technique. Yep. Yep. Um, I've gotten into numerous arguments with people telling me that uh, their teacher was an apprentice and uh, I know for a fact that right. I fucking wasn't. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a tricky thing. That and the fact that uh, what I also conveniently didn't mention in the videos that I got expelled from <laughs> Stella Adler. <laughs> I know, I know. Yep. I didn't mention it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. You lasted that, like six that, months. That was a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> I, it it is it is a, a funny poetic justice that you get expelled from a place and then are personally trained by one of her. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, but that was the thing. It was I, yeah. when I was training in Vancouver. It was um, Lee Strasberg's work, a lot of Meisner and Lee Strasberg, and sure, I was using my own personal life. Mm -hmm. And um, I was becoming miserable. Yep. I was becoming absolutely miserable. I bet. And I, I knew that my imagination was, was the key that like, I, I'm, you know, I don't, if I'm in a dark room, I'm not sitting there thinking about how sad I am. I'm, I'm going off into fucking space somewhere. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's how I work. Yeah. I totally. haven't had like this crazy traumatic fucking, you know, I was left in a, in a grocery bag on the sidewalk or whatever. And someone picked me up and that's how I became a drug dealer. I sure. <laughs> so it, it, like that wasn't my life. You know, I had sure. great parents a great childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Perfect. Um, so I used my imagination when I went to Stella and they started pulling out like Ivana Chubbuck's book. Oh, like, no, dude, that's Roy <laughs> London. This isn't Stella. Like, right. I'm here to learn her stuff. Right. Not Larry London, not Ivana Chubbuck, not Lee Strasberg, not Larry Moss. I mm -hmm. don't give a fuck. Yep. Stella Adler. That's yep. what I came here for. Not any of these other people's shit. Yeah. They can do whatever they want and that's fine. But this is what I came here for. And that's what Arthur taught. Nice. Like, verbatim. You know, it's perfect. It's, it's like a martial art. Same sort of thing. Technique. You know, it, if you it, want to learn Kung well, Fu, you're not going to be doing kickboxing. teacher <laughs> came in and audited one of Arthur's classes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, from Canada. So he came out and he was Perfect. visiting and he came and he, he audited one of the classes and he came up to me and was like, this guy, yeah. this guy knows what he's talking about. That's because cool. every fucking thing that he said, 
was everything that I was already taught in right. martial arts. <laughs> right. North is north, south is south. You right. can't argue with that. Yeah. You can't. It's not subjective. It's true. That's what it is. <laughs> so when you say something to me, like, I'm not here to teach you how to act. I'm here to teach you how to think. Mm-hmm. I go. There it is. Guy. There you go. I mean, it's working. It's working. Yeah. You got my interest. So actually, I, 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 have, I have to ask you, do you have any advice for like up and coming actors that you've learned that you didn't necessarily know going into it? Yeah. Uh, put yourself out there. Like, yeah, smart. Put yourself out there, but also acknowledge that you got to learn a technique, you know? Mm-hmm. Put yourself out there, utilize social media. It is a platform, it's an audience. If you're say if you say you're an actor, then act. Yeah. Then act. Yeah. Like I've never had that, you know, when I was training. That didn't I mean I had YouTube, I guess. I just didn't fucking figure it out. Sure. It was a dummy. My yeah. martial arts <laughs> teacher actually in 2005, I was making videos at oh, my house. Dude. Yeah. And he said, you got to put this shit on YouTube. This stuff's going to pop off. And I was like, no, it's not. Yeah, no, <laughs> shit. yeah right. That was 2005, dude. And That's... every time I see him. Goes, right. I told you, dude. I told you. Ground floor. Ground floor. Uh, I would say, I would, I would say utilize social media, but you also have to know that like, um, think of it like fighting. Yeah. Uh, if I say I'm a fighter and I post videos of me shadow boxing or whatever, mm-hmm. right? That's one thing. Sure. People, that's people now see it. I'm putting it out there and they, they know I exist. Mm-hmm. Okay. But then when push comes to shove, right. And I actually have to fight somebody. Can mm-hmm. I do it? Sure. Okay, well, that's where things change. Right. right? There's a lot of people that can shake their ass on TikTok mm-hmm. that have millions of followers and then they book a movie. Yeah. And guess yeah. what? Yeah. We learn really quick that these people have no fucking idea what they're doing. It's true. And that's what I'm trying to change. Yeah. Because I genuinely believe that the future of actors, the future of, of what this industry looks like is social media. It yeah. is, you know, social media is People Magazine. It's Us Weekly. It's Twitter. It's That's what it fucking is. Yeah. You know, 15, 20 years ago, we would look at People Magazine and look at, you know, celebrities go grocery shopping. They do what we do. And it's right. like, yeah, I guess they do. I guess they're not <laughs> different than we are. Right. You know? <laughs> and, and it's like, okay, well, but that's what social media is now. Like sort of the last yeah. generation of actor, actor would be like uh, the Tom Hardys, the Scarlett Johansons, I yeah. guess, right? Mm-hmm. Their social media game is shit. I'm just yeah. going to say it. It's yeah. shit. It's not it's good. They don't they're need it. Content. No, <laughs> yep. they don't need to. Yep. You don't need to. That's fine. I also acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. Right. I can legitimately say that my last two posts are better than the last fucking 30 that Tom yeah. Hardy posted. <laughs> yeah. I can fucking say that with conviction. Sure. Right? right. Tom Hardy's a fucking beast. Yeah. He's a beast. One of the best to ever do it. Easily. That yeah. guy gives me goosebumps just saying his name. I got goosebumps. Yeah, same, so, same, same. Alfie yeah. Solomon's. Yes. Get out now, of here. If I if I'm given an opportunity to do what he does on screen, I'm mm-hmm. gonna deliver. Damn right. Because that's what I was taught how to do. That's yeah. where my training comes from. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this yep. because this is all I fucking got right now. Right. That's, that's where it. you're at. That's where you're at. Where I'm at, baby. That's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. So I that's what I would say. If you're if you're an actor, uh, things are different. You don't have to move to Los Angeles. You yeah. don't have to move to New York unless True. you want to learn the craft. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn the craft, then I would suggest you move somewhere where it's a hub, where yep. people who were taught by people, New York, Los Angeles, I mean, that's that's where you're going to get it. You're going to get the information, but like you got The practical it. application. Practical, yeah. exactly. I feel you. Um, and if, if you're not getting that, and you're booking, then just listen to the veteran actors that are on set with you. Yes. Every fucking thing that they tell you and any opportunity you have to get an on-set coach, do it. Yeah. But don't, don't do it to rely on them. Mm-hmm. Do it to learn how to be independent of them. Yep. Learn the tools so learn that the, you can then use them. 
Yep. Start being ahead of the game instead of waiting for them to tell you what to do, do it already and then show them that you did it. And then you go, oh, okay, I'm one step. Ahead. Okay. I yeah, right. figured it all out, but it, it is different. It is different now than it used to be. Um, sure. And it will be different in the future. It'll be different 10 years from now. And so yeah. on. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. But that's keep learning. That's what I would say you've, you've got to learn an actual technique tell the world that you want to do this and put yourself out there maybe uh -huh. making content will be able to get you to one of these cities mm -hmm. um you know where you can learn that kind of thing but like get yourself into a place where you're confident enough in your own ability that if you are given a film or a part to play in a film mm -hmm. you have the confidence to look at that and go okay um i can do i can do this I, love right. it. I have an idea of what it is that I want to do and I'm going to unapologetically go after it. Hell yeah. You want to get. I love it. It's like, do the work, do the work, keep learning. I love yeah. it. Dude. Yeah. We've been talking for almost two hours. Look at us. I love it. We did it, dude. This was a blast. I am yeah. so glad that you hung out and this was great. I had a great time. So before I let you go, I got, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Tell me your stuff. Give me some yeah. good things. Uh, I would just say TikTok. You know, yeah, damn TikTok right. is sort of my central hub. Good. Uh, Instagram, um, I just sort of throw stuff on Instagram just because it's Instagram and sure, it's, it's everything from TikTok anyway. But I'm mostly active on on TikTok and also, uh, honestly, Clubhouse. Yeah, I, I genuinely really appreciate that app. I cannot, I literally cannot believe how practical of a tool that app is like for That's real cool. for this industry perfect perfect dude thank you so much thank you man I appreciate it. send me your movie because i want to watch it done and Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.